Hello, you're listening to the Robot Wars History Podcast, where we chat the development of Robot Wars and the British combat robotics scene in general. I'm your host, Luke, and with me this week are... Hello, I'm Dan. I'm Nick. And our special guest... Hey, I am Ollie. And this week, we'll be looking at Killatron. Oh boy, this is a... Uh, prob- probably, the, probably the second of the... Uh, the uh, Particularly good robots that were in in series one by series one standards. Three. Yeah, <clears throat> the, the series series one didn't have many greats, um, but Killatron was decent for its time. Yeah, I don't really think you can argue with that. I mean, to be fair, there weren't many greats probably because there were no there were basically no robots. Before yeah, this. Yeah. Series one was just kind of shit in general. They <laughs> really knew what they were doing. It 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 says it says a lot that, that one of the best robots of uh, of series one was a plastic wheelie bin lid with a year of ground clearance. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Killatron was built by Richard Broad, Abdul, and Ian Deja from a wheelie bin lid, basically. And it was uh, it was. One of the first bots introduced in the fir- in Heat Air, alongside Road alongside Roadblock. So after it's introduced there, its first run was on the Gauntlet, and it pretty much it set a precedent here of that. Whenever Killatron went on the Gauntlet, it would try to go over the ramp and then immediately fall. Off. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, to be fair, on the f- on the first Gauntlet, it made it over the first ramp and then it went off the second ramp right into the springs. Oops. Uh, which of course prompted another line from Jonathan. To an attack. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I don't think we'll get into that one today. Um, yeah, you remember that you cannot beat springs with a pickaxe, <laughs> boys. <laughs> it did. <laughs> yeah, it um, it. Did decently well on the gauntlet and went in the sumo where it just spent the entire axe just completely disregarding any of the rules, just swinging at Sean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, even then, it was just kind of boring. Like, nothing really happened. It just kind of evaded Sean and, like, you know, then they kind of locked taxes and, and, like, um, and, like, you know, that was it. Just ends. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it was a. <laughs> it, re- it really. It was, it was a classic case of winning the sumo just because no one knew how to do, drive house robots. Yeah. Trump just spends the entire match just kind of <clears throat> awkwardly edging around it. Yeah, it, it's another one of those robots that's it's actually bigger than Chuck as well. Uh. Killatron is giant. That's the thing. Yeah. And Shunt, weirdly enough, the first version of Shunt is really, really compact. <laughs> it's yeah, just like it this is. kind of squashed up thing. And it's literally just a front and back plow, both of them that do absolutely nothing, may I add. And then and it's got its really slow axe. axe. Exactly. Yeah. The axe is pathetic. I... Mm. Yeah, I genuinely think it's giving uh, Sergeant Meekle a run for its money with that. <laughs> oh, God. Less said about Shunt and Sergeant Meekle, the better, I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the alcoholic robot that is Shunt. Then after the sumo, we see Killachon's first battle against Shogun, and um, it's not really much of a—it's not really much of a battle to be honest. Shogun yeah. just drives onto the grill and dies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th- this is um, this is Killatron in series one. At the same time, as much as it tells us that Shogun is absolutely incompetent, I mean, it just literally backs onto a grill. It uh, it shows that um, Killatron in series one really just was wheels with this it wasn't even an axe it was just this swinging mechanism that tapped on top of something it uh yeah, like the, no i don't know it, ma- it managed to pierce shogun at least it it, it it knocked a little slab off top off the top of it but killatron in series one really was a case of nothing in terms of offensive power despite having what looked like one of the only capable weapons and uh it it was obviously very unbalanced which it always is but even into the even when you compare it to other series one robots, Killatron from series one really isn't that special at all. Because think of the other Heat finalists. Who could it realistically beat? Would it beat Body Hammer? Would it beat Robot the Bruce? It probably wouldn't even penetrate that. Would it beat Tracy? Recyclops? Would it beat Tracy? Would it beat Mortis? 
Killatron, Killatron's seen as unlucky in Series 1 because it lost to the eventual champion, but in reality, it had no offensive power, it, it couldn't push, and uh, it, it didn't have any armour, so... And this battle doesn't really uh, help its case to being one of Series 1 better robots, really. Mm. Well, I mean, speaking of unlucky, their next fight against Roadblock... Yeah, Killatron is the absolute worst... Is one of the worst bots to put up against Roadblock. Yeah. Ground I mean, clearance. that ground clearance. <laughs> Good I God. I mentioned that yet. It's been like, what, 10 minutes? I mean, like, haven't even mentioned that yet. Yeah, I, I, mean, I think it's just um, part of the uh, parcel with Killatron, isn't it? It's just like, you mentioned that word, and it's just synonymous with a skyscraper <laughs> of a ga ground clearance, so... <laughs> yeah. But it's 10 did, centimetres! Did, How did, did all its wheels successful? ever touch the ground? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's that's the thing. Like, it's like I I, I mentioned in when we were talking about this fight last week. It's um, it it's it it never has all six of its wheels on the ground at the same time. Like the middle pair are actually lower down on its wheelbase than the other than the other two pairs. So what was the point yeah. of having that many wheels in the first place? I I think it's because it it obviously depending where its axe is resting its wheels that it, its weight then drops to the wheels on that side so I guess it's more of a balancing act but it does look quite funny you have to say <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah um against Roadblock it it's obvious what was going to happen it ends up on its yeah. back yeah and then uh, Matilda's chainsaw proves to actually be able to damage it because it's made of plastic ah uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, it even fails to pierce Roadblock, which is literally armoured in road signs. <laughs> one millimetre of aluminum or whatever. So yeah, uh, I still think it's one of the better bots of Series yeah, 1, to be yeah. honest. I mean, it, it, had a decent it had a decent weapon in that it had a weapon. Yeah, it's certainly one of the better Series 1 robots. I just don't think it has enough offensive power to make up for what it lacks in decent design and low ground clearance, which obviously it lacked. So mm -hmm. it's up there, but... There is some robots that are better than it, even in Series 1. Obviously, it improves for Series 2, though, so... I think, um... um, um uh, mm. Of one of the, um, um, uh, Heat, um, Heat, uh, finalists in that series, Killistron was, uh, one of the better ones, if you ask me. Yeah. I'd say it's I'd say its weaknesses aren't overwhelmingly bad by series one. I mean, you can kind of get away with plastic armor just because no one has anything that will damage any armor apart from mortis, I guess. Yeah. And like it's it's problem with the wheels. Like, there's not a lot of bots that can exploit that yet. And plus, it's just te it's just teething pains. No one has any idea what. Yeah. They're doing, yeah. So. I mean. It, the armor itself is never going to be a danger unless it's in the CPZ and mm. uh, isn't against Bash because even Bash's saw flies off against Killatron. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it it's more in terms of it against robots that are low in Series One. Its its axe won't give it damage points, and the other robot will control the fight. So it really lacks in yeah. that area to beat some of the better ones. But it's certainly in that higher tier pack as such. Yeah. And then in um, it, when it went in, into Series 2, they uh, they painted it the wrong colours. Yeah, they came back uh, orange. Yeah. <laughs> apart from that, there was no difference. No, it, its axe was upgraded. It was now driven by a flywheel so it could actually do stuff. Oh, okay, okay, I must have missed that in my research. And it was also it was also seeded fourth. <laughs> yeah, I think that was above Cassius and and Chaos. Yeah, because supposedly, according to everyone on the show, it was a grand finalist in series one. Ah yes, uh, ah yeah. The first of the. <laughs> yeah, there is a there is a. Yeah, the first of uh, many result mistakes. Yeah, there is a trend of series two. Everyone says Kellatron was a grand finalist, even Richard Brand. <laughs> Good old Richard getting in there. <laughs> uh. I think he just thought, well, if everyone else is saying it, why not? <laughs> yeah. Along with him. Mm. He knew. He totally knew. Mm. Definitely. <laughs> and um, in its gauntlet, it once again drives halfway over the ramp before falling off. And then it just starts swinging its shunt and dead metal for the rest of the Oh, thing. God. This I mean, is like, absolutely was... hilarious. Interesting fight to watch, I think. <laughs> It's it's weird because 
Yeah, it's weird because when they first engage with each other, there's like Shunt makes a bit of a hole. Killatron kind of like moves Shunt's terribly attached fiberglass lid around. But then for in like the next 30 seconds, they swing without hitting each other at all. And Dead Metal's just there being like, what is happening, lads? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, d- despite only making a distance of 10 metres, it still manages to make it through to the yard uh, for the next round of the heat. It it goes through its trial, just kind of, well, it survives, and then it fights Aurak, and Aurak, it's one of those stupid fights where the arena takes out a robot. Aurak gets killed by a spike blow to the drive chain, and then Kiltron's axe actually gets stuck in Aurak. So because Aurak is armoured with fucking wood. <laughs> Oh, it's just like Overdozer. Yeah. Original Overdozer. <laughs> they drag Aurak to the flame pit, and it kind of... It's one of those things where, like, the robot seems like it's actually just about to burst up in flames, <laughs> but it just kind of smoulders for the rest of the fight. Yeah. Just a rather stupid fight mm, all around, really. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> and then... They, for the heat final, they went up against Technophobic, and uh, they kind of... They kind of just dodged around with each other for the entire fight <laughs> until Killatron just kind of shoves the spikes on top of the head into Technophobic and pushes it down. Wasn't which... it the uh, first fight to include um, <laughs> to include um, a, um, um, a pitting? Or am I wrong in that? Yes, I'm pretty sure that's the case. <laughs> oh, awesome. Killatron made history. Congratulations, oh. Killatron. <laughs> Tough as nails would be proud of that pitting. Yeah, that um, put them through to the semi-final, and uh, I mean, I don't even need to say what goes on the gauntlet because it's what happens every time they go on the gauntlet. They go over the ram, they get attacked by house robots, and then <laughs> manage to go through. And in the pinball, they just knocked, focused on knocking over blocks and barrels, and got 135 points. They were actually second. I swear they were stuck in one zone for that entire pinball run. Like they were around the bricks and the skittles, knocked a few down. Then Kill a Lot was like in its face the whole yeah. time. Yeah, and they got 135 Incredible. points. Incredible. <laughs> that is quite impressive. Yeah. And, and then they went up against Beamoth and uh, won. That yeah, this is actually a really cool victory. They like cave, they like knock off a panel with one blow and then drag them over. It's it's bloody savage. <laughs> Many of uh, Beamoth's losses. Mm. Yeah, this is the example of uh, this is this is the pinnacle. This is Kilotron's yeah, pinnacle. Yeah, and it's the yeah. example of its uh, step up. Like so far in series two, it's been against robots that it can warm up against, but here it it shatters Bearmoff and it actually knocks it into submission before dragging it over two. Yeah, it was already dead. Oh, so yeah. it was a very good battle. I... Yeah, yeah, good rally of blows, and Bearmoff was done for. So yeah, I enjoyed uh, watching it, which is. Uh... More than I can say for um, most of uh, the things that I've been watching for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's more than you can say for like 90% of fights in Series 2. <laughs> yeah, Series 2 was... Uh, <laughs> series 2 was the point where like there were it was just meh as opposed to uh, Series 1 where oh, everything was laughably yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, Series 2 was just... The house robot controller's going, yeah, I'm bored of this battle, so I'm ending it. There, there wasn't much else in terms of 90% of battles, yeah. so yeah, it, yeah. it was good to see a robot killing another one. Mm. Yeah. And uh, then they, uh, they actually were in the grand final. See, this time they made it to the grand final. <laughs> but they... But it was they had a pretty ignoble exit. <laughs> well, they 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 made they they, got, they, they, went they at, drew against Panic Attack, who was just so low that they couldn't actually hit it. <laughs> I thought they just they kind of uh, broke down. They like it didn't even move. I swear. Yeah, it, Panic Attack got one hit on them, and it knocked out a drive pin and just killed yeah. them dead. Poor show guys. And then Killalot just holds it over the flame pit for what seems dangerously long for something made out of plastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Melted killer run. That- that actually sounds awesome. That that must be why they weren't in series three. <laughs> <laughs> Not <laughs> enough paint to uh, get it ready you? again. No, it is genuinely. I'm impressed. Well, I'm not impressed. I'm more surprised that they didn't like start melting. Mm. 
Because he, because Killer held it over it for like a straight half minute or so. <laughs> yeah, you could tell uh, Killatron was getting tired at this point. I remember before the battle started, Richard Broad said uh, the axe was starting to wear, and he actually ended up making it shorter for this fight as a result. And yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> well when you're facing panic attack. Very soon yeah, panic attack yeah, fully working. At its at, uh, at full fitness with its axe shaft as long as it could be, Killatron could have easily hit something internally here. But mm. it, it's an interesting yeah. fight. It's, it, this is the this is probably the most disappointing grand final battle of all time because <laughs> it could have been an interesting fight, and obviously it ended in one hit anyway. Mm. So and that was a bump, not a hit. That's true. Yeah, and then it had it, and then in the third place fight, it went up against Roadblock again, and I mean. Yeah, I mean, we know, I think yeah, we'll say Roadblock just fight, gets under it again. Uh, yeah, Roadblock still clearly won. I mean, they to be fair, they don't turn them over for a while. They kind of they kind of keep on driving under them, them just not being able to do anything. Kind of like their fight with Cassius. Yeah, it's yeah. just Roadblock and, but, bullying it. It's literally just pushing it to the house robots, <laughs> and it's pushing them between each other. It's like, no, you push him, you push him. Poor old Killatron. <laughs> it might as well have got toppled over again, but no, it went in the pit eventually, didn't it? Yeah. Not a very dignified exit. Yeah, but still fourth place, not bad. Hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, series. I mean, it's obvious series two is the best Killatron ever did, obviously. But I mean, I think it. I think it earned that fourth place. I mean, it was genuine. It was genuinely one of the best robots. Yeah. Um, That's not saying much about the standards of series two, but no. still. And so they 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 skipped out for a year because they they were they weren't in series three, and then they returned in series four with a. With nothing stuff. changed. No, 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 no. It, it, it does have changes. It's got those little. <laughs> it's got those little bars on the side of it to but try and help it. With... Important changes. <laughs> guys, uh. guys. The wedge. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. <laughs> that uh, goddamn wedge. <laughs> it was. It was. It, it stuck a plastic scoop to the front of it. Oh, a wedge. Need I remind you? That fell off when it hit suicidal tendencies. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Killatron. Killatron shouldn't have come back. I'm just saying. Yeah. They should have stayed home. They should have retired. Yeah. But they came back. They 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 could have ended series two. Just retired there. Accepted they couldn't. That they had personal issues, didn't they, for series three? Like just too busy I think at the time or something but yeah. either way they they were a genuinely good robot for series 2 for what it was and go out as a grand finalist That's I mean what you surely do. Richard yeah, that... Broad must have been s- sitting at home watching series 3 he couldn't have thought we can beat Hypno Disc and Chaos 2 surely <laughs> but and his, oh, and his way God. to combat that his way to combat that the bars and to counter scoop. Chaos 2 the wedge to counter Hypno Disc Fantastic! Oh, what could go wrong? K- K- Killer- <laughs> Killatron could absolutely it could absolutely play Spinner Killer against Hypno Disc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that. For goodness <laughs> sake! Just as well as uh, Splinter, you know. Yeah. Kill- Killatron could get round the back of Hypno Disc and and tap it to death. Yeah. <laughs> <with the axe. laughs> yeah. If the axe, yeah, they can just stop the yeah they can stop the disc yeah. with the axe. Yeah, Mike Shunt did mm. definitely. Indeed, <laughs> imagine. So yeah, they're um, <laughs> they group melee against suicidal tendencies and Maverick. The wedge gets n- dislodged by impact suicidal tendencies, and they manage. The most they do is they manage to maybe get a few centimeters into suicidal tendencies polycarbonate. <laughs> oh god! Like Killatron does nothing. Yeah. Like, it, the only reason it survived this fight is because Suicidal Tendencies decides to flip over Maverick. Which was fairly yeah. lucky. I'm yeah, but basically, lucky it... Because, like, you know, it, it, they were going to say a tough opponent now. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I was about to say, I don't think it was... That wasn't luck, because next they were up against Wheelie Big Jeans. <laughs> I mean, can I just say, but, like, I mean, they didn't... That a flip... They barely pierced Polycarb. It was... <laughs> Never mind Titanium. Yeah. But like yeah, right, that uh, like a flip. It was like so uh, graceful, just, just, just um, um uh, how um a uh, uh, went over. It was just so beautiful. Yeah. 
uh, and it and it landed it landed on its axe, which uh, probably destroyed that again for another two years, no. like in series two. <laughs> no, it kept it kept swinging away I mean, right to the end. <laughs> yeah, very defiant. Don't. <laughs> Those flips were so graceful, they sh- it should have been scored by Tchaikovsky. <laughs> uh. No, I think... No, the funniest thing is, after um, after the first flip, um, after the first flip, it ends up near the PPZ, and then Shunt just kind of shoves it out like, no, do it again, do it again! <laughs> yeah. uh. I want a repeat! Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I, I just loved the yeah, they... um, the ongoings in the team booth for that match. They were like giving each other slaps. It's like use the spinner killer wedge, Richard, <laughs> and he gets flipped, and uh, it all kicks off. Yeah, it didn't work. They're poor upgrades. Yeah, it, they they, they, add, they added they added the spikes <laughs> I mean, to the side of it to stop it from being flipped over. Unfortunately, they came up against the robot. That I was think that wasn't flipper. that extreme. Wasn't that extreme one? No, 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 no. They're they, in series they, they four. Yeah. Oh, right. I didn't even. I didn't even know yeah. this. <laughs> and uh, are we going to talk about the celebrity special? <laughs> I think. Ah, oh, please not. Please I, not. <laughs> I think all you can say is the design looks nice. The paint job is solid. That's oh, yeah, about it's, it. It's the best paint job but that Kellertron's ever had. Boxing glove on the pickaxe. It's like weapon is like now literally even more useless than it already was. Yep. I was expecting the uh, because they've got boxing gloves on the side bars too. I was expecting them at first when I first saw it back in my uh naive childhood for them to uh press out like prize fighters did, and oh, I was disappointed the, when they didn't. It was it was, it was the, <laughs> the, the genesis of the of the uh the wall on Total Wipeout. <laughs> <laughs> That would that would have been great because you'd have the you'd have the axe swinging, covering the front and back, and then the sides of the boxing gloves. You you're not safe anywhere near Kilotron, man. Yeah. Ineffective. It's got 360 <laughs> degrees of utterly ineffective mm. weaponry. And then it came back again. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> oh, string one, just one oh. time. Right. Do you know what's Do you know something that really confuses me still? What? The stats recorded it at 97 kilograms. Where the hell was that extra weight put in? Because it couldn't have been the armor. <laughs> and it sure as hell yeah. wasn't the axe. The, they, Maybe it was the uh, scoop. I think it was they, the uh, scoop. They they made the um they made the self writing bars a bit angled, and they gave it like these weird triangle bits above, uh, right next to the bars, which did nothing. So maybe they just added more. Unnecessary self-writing garbage. I don't know. Garbage. I have been. Um, <laughs> ignore that. Um, uh, yeah. Oh. Maybe it was. Maybe it was like. Maybe it was a five millimeter hard ox wedge, but they just never got to add it. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, it, it was planned weight. Yeah. The the thing about this fight is it doesn't even it isn't even Killatron that. Uh, concerns me in this fight it's the fact that series five and extreme splinter is a really decent robot but it's the first technically to be immobilized in a battle between agrobot and killatron that is depressing <laughs> yeah that's really yeah. depressing I, I would have loved to uh to um um uh, see killatron going through because it just would have been so beautiful. what into the qualifier yes Oh my god. Bone or two, um, Hypno Disc, Exterminator, and um, Anakul Senna, um, uh, Arnold's A Terminator. But like, it would have been beautiful. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Just to see Killer Tron mean... fight Hypno Disc. <laughs> <laughs> Spin a killer wedge. <laughs> oh yeah. Hypno Disc wouldn't stand a chance. I mean, let's just. Uh, just to remark on the other. Just because we're, we're never going to get to cover this either. How funny is it that Agrobot immobilizes itself by just uh, it did the rain down that caster wheel? <laughs> yeah, it, <did. laughs> it, it, it it killed itself in the exact same way that Razor killed itself when it fought Agrobot. Karma. <laughs> it's like it's like poetry. It rhymes. Yeah. Uh, Ian Lewis just sabotaged the robot. Yeah, uh, you thought it was funny when it happened to us. Part of his agreement by any chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some people are gentlemen. Some people don't update their robots in series two. 
Oh, what a mess this mayhem was, though. Because <laughs> nothing. There was loads of genuinely good mayhems in Extreme, especially in the first half of the uh, qualifiers. Oh, yeah. it, you get oh, Firmador. Yeah. You get Firmador throwing Bearmoth and Stinger out. You get Hypnodisc going on a rampage, and then you get Killatron doing nothing. Splinter kind of trying to do something, but ending up getting toppled. Agrobot killing itself. The house robots deciding the fight. Essentially, <laughs> it uh, it I, it's. I feel like the house robot drivers are like, no, we're not letting this piece of shit through. Yeah, just like. What are you even doing yeah, here? Yeah, they knew Killatron was back because the house robots went back to series two mode here, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They gave it a fitting send-off. Yeah. Um, it's in the PPZ. Get it, boys! <laughs> <laughs> but there are no PPZs anymore. Don't care. <laughs> there are now. Uh. And that marked the end of the killer. That marked the end of the killer trial career. It, it kind of, yeah, because they 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 certainly tried to come back. Um, yes, yes, um, they tried to re-enter with Killer Tron Two, which was it was kind of similar in design to Dominator Two in a way. But shit. Um, but it lost about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it looks like it was covered in foam from the one that picture is, that exists. That is the it, ugliest so. fucking robot. Um, <laughs> It's hideous. I, I I honestly have no idea what its armor is supposed yeah, to be. Like for all I know, they've for all I know they've mutilated another wheelie bin. Yeah, yeah, I mean at least Killatron in the past like owned its really awkward design. It looked awkward, but it looked unique because of it. But yeah. Killatron two, he yeah here it just looked like it. It was disgusting. Yeah, it's basically. just a melted Killatron, <laughs> a melted molded Killatron. <laughs> It lost. It lost a barbaric response, and I mean, if that saved us having to see that thing in, if that saved us having to see that thing in more than shitty quality. Then, yeah. thank God, thank you, God, you're doing so God's work, say, bar uh, barbaric uh, response. Melting. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna say, um, um, uh, uh, melted killers from. <laughs> Does that make it, um, uh, um, um, uh, uh, season uh, two killers from, or what? Yeah, that's actually yeah, that's actually what was left of the uh, season two shell after it like finished melting after it cooled down. That's what was left, and they're like, we can build a robot out of this. <laughs> yeah, it was set. It was set to enter CV seven with something called which is Spinatron, basically he was he was going to uh, take the axe off of Killatron two and put a spinning axe on it instead. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it, apparently it was apparently it was designed so that it would spin one way and then when it hits something, spin around the other way with equal force. I mean, hopefully that's more force than Series 4 Killatron, <laughs> but uh, it never got past the design stage. Then he never entered qualifying. By, by and design, that was it for Killatron. By design stage, we mean a, an, an MS paint drawing that's completely fucking wonky. <laughs> yes. <laughs> An MS Paint card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ellis would be proud. <laughs> yes. Uh. So yeah, that is the story of Killatron. So, I mean, in conclusion, I'd say that was... It was one of the more effective bots of the early series. Yeah, I mean, in, in the sense that it... It actually made it made it. It was a heat finalist in series one. It was a grand finalist in series two. Really, at that point, it was it was a pretty good robot for its day. It's just the mistake was coming back after that because it was outclassed. Yeah. It was yeah. outclassed <laughs> severely in series four. Like it only survived the uh, oh, the first round like, because um, the, the thing that was killing it decided to kill back. something else. If had been changed um, when it returned, then like maybe. They like would have been re re remembered slightly more fondly, but like yeah, they just didn't change enough. So like I mean like you know it just kind of was a, a joke by uh, series four standards. Yeah, yeah it, it, Killatron is very much a case of it's an early series robot which can just about nav navigate gauntlets and trials and then win a battle or two. And it, it it can save its energy for these big hits in moments against robots that aren't armoured that well, and it worked effectively yeah. in those early series. But it, in a way, because Killatron to cope with the uh, 
uh, quickly upgrading standards had to change, it's good in a way that we never saw it again. Yeah. It's not in it it's not trying to uh insult Killertron 2 as such, but it would have been a case of it changing an entire robot's identity to make it probably not even that more competitive. And that would have been even more of a shame than what we saw in series four and extreme really. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good bomb for when it was introduced. It really fell behind by the time it was, uh, it was done though. And it, what, what was it doing in extreme series one? Trying to have recaptured past their glories, I think. Yeah, it's a classic case. Of but, I mean, they were ahead. grand finalists twice. <laughs> <laughs> they even came third. <laughs> oh, God. So, that's the episode for the week. Uh, like and subscribe and comment as usual. And next week we'll be covering Mortis. So, bye-bye everyone. Bye.